Hey guys, Lucas here, and today I want to talk to you about the Ricoh's lens, okay? But just before that, I want to remind you that Ricoh has put out, or is kind of asking everyone to use, a new tag on Instagram. It's shootgr underscore, and then your city name. So for me, it's shootgr underscore Tokyo. The idea being that, you know, we can all get to know who's using the lovely Ricoh GR for their photography. And of course, please, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below and like the video and subscribe to the channel and so you can see more content like this in the future. Anyway, today what I want to talk about is specifically the lens that the Ricoh GR comes with and it's sort of, you know, how to say, characteristics. It's little uh, intangible, intangible qualities and then how I like to use it. What, what does this lens do for me, right? How do I work within its constraints, right? So first, let's talk about the technical specs very, very briefly. I mean, you all know them, but I want to underline one thing because we often say that the Ricoh has a 28 millimeter lens. We like to say that. I say that too sometimes. But of course, as you all know, it does not. It says right here it has an 18.3 millimeter lens. And the only reason we always say 28 is because it ha it's equivalent to what a 28 millimeter lens would look like in terms of the field of view on a full frame camera or a camera with a 35 millimeter you know, diagonal sensor, right? This being an APS-C sensor with the crop, the 18 has the same field of view of the, of the 28. But it's not a 28, strictly speaking, which means it comes with a different depth of field. A wider lens or shorter focal length, an 18 millimeter in this case, has more depth of field, more things will be in focus than on a 28 millimeter lens, which would have a slightly shallower depth of field. The difference probably isn't massive, but it is there. Okay, now that is actually very advantageous for street photography, which is kind of what this camera is geared towards, and that's mainly what I use it for. It's also advantageous for architectural photography, which is the second thing that I like to use it for. And the reason for that is because more depth of field is good. Now, for some people, they want more bokeh, more background blur in their street photography, and that's fair enough. But I'm of the school of thought of like, uh, for example, Alex Webb is one of my favorite photographers and his work has a lot of depth, a lot of layers where things in the foreground, midground, and background are all more or less in focus. So he was probably shooting on, you know, I don't know what he was shooting on, but I imagine he was using small apertures. The nice thing about the GR's lens is that even on a pretty open aperture, you can get quite a lot of things in focus or at least nearly in focus, even on f2.8. Though ideally I use, you know, smaller apertures in the daytime. This also plays into one of the main things that the Ricoh is great at, and that is this, this feature called Snap Focus, which is a whole other video on this channel that you can watch. But essentially with Snap Focus, you're, you're setting a particular range within which you want to focus, and having more depth of field for that is very useful because it makes it easier to get your subject in that range. So to that end, this 18.3 millimeter lens that we like to say is a 28 is actually fantastic. Okay, and I'm gonna demonstrate that, well, many times hopefully today, but right away with this amazing scene behind me that we just realized is here today, it's gorgeous with the sky, is that with this nice and wide 18.3 or 28 millimeter equivalent lens, I can get this entire scene, so this is what I meant by more architectural or urban landscape photography, and at f8, I know that everything is perfectly sharp, I don't have to worry so much about where to focus, right? Something else that I should also point out on a side note is because the lens is so small, so short, the elements are very tiny, the camera can focus really quickly actually because it doesn't have to move a lot of glass around like it does on a much bigger lens like, you know, an SLR with a giant lens and all that. So that's another little plus is I can very quickly and easily focus on this scene here without really paying much mind to where I focus. If I focus on the building or that building or on the sky with f8 on this lens, I know that pretty much everything is going to be sharp. Okay. So let's move on, move on. We're going to walk around this area, which is Shinjuku, by the way, and we're going to do some street photography and some more architectural photography as we go. All right, so we walked a little bit away from where we just started, uh, off this terrace here in Shinjuku. And just over here, there's a bridge, and there's this cool spiral staircase that I've shot before. And I think we can, we can have a lot of fun with this, with this, you know, and show the different aspects of, that I just discussed about the Ricoh's lens. Okay, so let's come over here. I love spiral staircases in general because usually in, in my photography, and especially in the city, you deal with a lot of straight lines, angles and stuff. But this gives you some nice curvature to, to things. So if I come over here, first and foremost, I can just shoot 
straight down and get this nice curve. Then again, I'm, you know, what I was saying about the lens is that, you know, at f8, at, at this distance, I mean, everything is nice and sharp. You know, of course, with the 35 or 50, I would have to be farther back. So it just allows me to work these kind of scenes a little bit better. You know, in a sense, um, you know, zooming, zooming in, meaning a change in the focal length, or actually getting closer and farther are not the same thing. So it is, it is true that if I just move back or move forward, it's not quite the same as if I had a longer focal length. But, here we go, here's somebody. But I will say that it is definitely possible to just get closer with a wide lens, right? So um, I think it's, I'd rather have a wide lens and then just get closer when necessary than have a long lens and obviously I can't fly up into the sky to move back from this scene. Okay, so we got a shot there with a person. She wasn't that interesting, but we got something. Let's try one like this. Now, I'm um, full disclosure, I'm stealing this idea right now from a photographer who I really, whose work I really admire named Siegfried Hansen. And he, uh, he's actually shot here before and he's showed us this spot once when uh, I met him. So this particular idea where there's the, the lines here, you know, this photo's probably a little bit different, but I just want to say that I didn't come up with this particular one. But I will say that, again, just to demonstrate, the 28 millimeter focal length works well here because I can focus on the stairs in front of me and I'm still getting the background here, right where the road is, pretty sharp. And again, it helps to have an 18 millimeter lens with an F8 aperture right now to try to get as much depth of field as possible, which is great for street photography. Okay, so we did the, the wide angle shot with the, uh, the small aperture to try to get everything sharp, right? But I didn't mention it in the beginning, but now I wanna actually shift gears. I wanna demonstrate that you actually can get very lovely shallow depth of field with this lens, even though it's only an 18 millimeter lens and 2.8 is a pretty big aperture, but it's not like 1.4 or something that you, know, you would get a ton of bokeh. But you can do bokeh, but the bokeh should be not behind your subject, although that's possible too if you get close to the subject, but instead you can put the bokeh in the foreground. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to f2.8. Okay, and I'm going to shoot through these little circular openings here. Okay, I'm going to focus on something out there. There's like a motorbike parked, so right now I'm focusing on the bike. But really what I want is a person to walk by. That would be nice. Okay, if I can get the person in the right place. That's of course the tricky part. Here we go, here's the guy coming. And it's, it's very hard because like he's in that in the perspective that I can see through the hole, right? He's only there for a split second, like just a moment. So I'm kind of like moving around to try to get him. Um, these are not fantastic, but they're okay. And one thing I, I will say I love about the specific lens on the Ricoh here is even on f2.8, which is wide open, the lens is really sharp, really sharp. A lot of cameras or lenses, and this is my own experience with my other lenses that I own for other cameras, when they're open all the way, fully open aperture, whether it's 1.4, or 2, 2.8, or 4, whatever, they're always like not as sharp as they could be. But the Ricoh, honestly, I don't know how they did it, but it seems like it's sharpest when it's at f2.8, which is, which is really weird in a good way. Okay, so let me see here. Let's try another one. There's another person here. They're all kind of a little bit too close. I need them to be more over there. Maybe if I change position a little bit here, we mix it up. Because there are some other elements out there, like some cones and things. Yeah, there we go. And the pinpoint autofocus here is a must. So I'm using the smallest little point. And that's allowing me to focus, you know, on the people there. Okay. And then, again, just highlighting the, the wide angle aspect here. So we're getting, uh, we're getting, uh, oh, there we go. That's a pretty good one. Wow. Nice. The guy crossing the street was really good. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm quite happy with that. So what I was going to say is that because it's wide, like, sure, if I had a longer lens, I could still shoot through these little holes. I could still get the bokeh. But I'm getting, like, 10 of the holes, I'm, I'm seeing, even this close, I'm seeing quite a few of these little holes. 
which I think is good for this photo because I want to create that pattern and then have a person somewhere break the pattern, right? If I could only see one of the openings, it wouldn't be as interesting of a photo. Okay, so let's see here. Let's try a couple more shots. Now just to mix it up of this stairs before we go on. Okay, there we go. That was a nice moment. Again, the wide angle aspect here is, show, is really, um, how would I say, like, I can really use the dramatic lines here. Okay. So again, I kind of emphasize that with this lens, you can get pretty close to things and you can sh use these dramatic perspectives where this element is much closer than the background and therefore you see this kind of depth to things and everything is pretty much in focus because I'm an f8 and being an 18 millimeter lens you actually gain some depth of field compared to say an actual 28 or an even longer lens like a 35 or a 50. So this makes for fun kind of street mixed with architectural kind of photography. All right I feel like we've well I don't know if we have exhausted this spot but let's move on. I think we can go on to another spot somewhere else. All right, so we're just shooting on this bridge over here and then we're gonna move on. And actually this escalator here is also a good example of the versatility of the small lens is I can stick it in between like this into an escalator. And there's this really cool infinity mirror effect. So I'm gonna shoot the other way as well once we get a little lower. Okay. So the idea is that, you know, because the lens is so small, I'm able to get into this small space okay and there we go and those photos are uh, pretty cool I'm happy with those all right let's keep going this way put my settings back here make sure everything is back to normal and yeah so I think I'm think I'm highlighting the versatility of the lens to you guys pretty well um, I hope it's clear that the idea is that because it's wide, you can do all kinds of different things with it. If it was long, it would actually be quite more limiting because there's only so far back you can usually move in most situations, I find. And not to mention, I haven't mentioned it, but of course you can crop. It is a 24 megapixel you know, sensor, so the images produced are quite large. And you, know, you can crop it down to only 12 megapixels, so that would be a 50% crop, which would effectively double your focal length, you know, double it. it just means in terms of field of view, so you would go from an 18 to like a 36 millimeter, I, I, I guess. My math could be totally off in terms of the, how crop factors work. Ignore that part, but you get my point. You, you could make the uh, resolution smaller, but therefore effectively zoom in and you still have a workable image. You can't do that if the lens was say a 50 millimeter lens. Well, there's no way to like magically uncrop it to make it wider, right? Nothing can be done about it. So yeah, I think, you know, I like the, the, the choice of putting a 20 millimeter or 18.3 millimeter on this APS-C sensor camera. So we're here on this the west side of Shinjuku Station, near the, uh, you know, this kind of shopping area or like you know, lots of bars and restaurants and a big famous camera store around here. In fact, there's a lot of camera stores around here. Secondhand film camera stores, you know, old, old stuff like that. But of course, digital stuff. Yeah, so sort of camera hotspot, camera central around here. Looking around at the shop fronts, it's, it's, I actually I find a, a tricky area to shoot because there's a lot going on. It's very chaotic. There's a little game center here. So it can be kind of like sensory overload or like target overload. There's just too many things to shoot. Nothing really, really stands out. Like when I'm in a spot like this away from everything, I don't really know what I'm really going for. But I might just get some nice wide shots. In fact, here, Let's do a really slow shutter. So I think I can, I can do that. I can pull off like a tenth or something like that. And then we'll get these people walking by, but blurry. So I can get the, the scenery and de-emphasize the crowd. The crowd just becomes a sort of secondary element because the scenery is nice. I'm gonna go even slower. I'm gonna go to a fifth or a half. Let's go to a half. Let's go crazy. Down to a half see how that works and yeah, a bad and pretty sharp very sharp for just a half so yeah that shows another way that I like to use this lens this kind of cityscape photography a wide 
shot just of a city scene with all the lights and all that and um, not even worrying about the people. So not exactly street photography, but still a valid kind of use. And again, why I like this lens or another way that I find is its strength. Another way you can use it to its strength. Okay, let's go a little farther and I'll try the same kind of shot. I'm going to keep these settings, but from a slightly different perspective. All right, so I'll do the same thing from here. We have this iconic neon sign here in Shinjuku. And I'm still on a half, I'm still on F11, and we're gonna get the crowd sort of flowing through the area. I'm taking a ton of photos because on a half, you know, the stabilization works great, but on a half second, I'm really kind of pushing it to the limit. We'll do a vertical shot too, get the whole neon sign. Oh, the horizontal ones are really good. The vertical ones are a little less good. Maybe my hands were shaking more. Gorgeous. So there you have it. I think, I think we can stop there. I feel like I've illustrated enough points here. Maybe one thing we didn't really do today is get like a really close portrait of someone, like a street portrait. But to be honest, I don't really shoot that kind of stuff. That's not my thing. I like to shoot more atmospheric things. I like shooting through stuff like I demonstrated with like a small opening and, you know, or through glass, through windows. And so for that, this focal length is, is great. Now, I'm not trying to say that the 28 millimeter or 18.3 millimeter lens with an equivalent field of view to a 28 millimeter on a full frame camera, I'm not saying that this lens is the end all be all perfect lens that can do anything. There are things it cannot do. But when I'm out shooting with my GR, I try to you know, shoot things that will, again, play to the strengths of the lens rather than trying to fight against them and, you know, bump up into the, the, the weaknesses or the drawbacks of the lens, right? So no lens out there is perfect, no camera is perfect, but if you have you know, the right kind of approach, you can play into the strengths of the lens. So I hope I gave you guys some ideas for that today. And uh, you know, as always, thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you have any comments or questions about this topic, please leave them below and I'll be glad to go, uh, go through and answer them. And of course, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one in the future. All right, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.